Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. I'm going to talk to you tonight about the test that we encounter on the way to promotion. How many of you are looking to come up higher in life? Well, everybody is. Some of you are believing God to be used in ministry. Some of you are believing God for more financial freedom. You're, you're just fed up with being in debt all the time. Some of you are believing God for better employment. Some of you want to go back to college and get a degree. Maybe there's somebody here who really wanted to be a doctor or a nurse, and you never got the opportunity to do that, and you would still like to do that. We're all praying for something. I hope to goodness that there's nobody in this building tonight that's not praying for something, because prayer is an amazing thing. Now, last night, we had close to 900 people give their life to the Lord, and tonight, at the end of the session, we're going to have another opportunity for people to give their life to the Lord. Now, if you don't have Christ in your life, then you have no option when it comes to temptation. You're just going to give in to it, and you're going to do the wrong thing, and your life is just going to turn out worse and worse and worse. But when you have Christ in you, you have options. And I want to talk to you tonight about the options that you have as a believer and the good choices that you can make that will help you have the abundant life that Christ died to give you. But I am not going to stand here tonight and just talk to you about all the great things that God wants to give you without being fully honest with you and having full disclosure that you are going to go through things. They're not all going to be pleasant, and you're going to have to learn, just like we all do, to get through them and be stable and not let your trials and tribulations control how you behave and how you treat people and what you think and how you respond to God. We need to grow up. Amen. Amen. And, uh, you know, I'm all about spiritual maturity. I think that's very important. It's not something you have to do to be saved. You're totally saved by the grace and the mercy of God. If you truly believe in Jesus, then I believe you'll go to heaven even if you just squeak in the back door by the skin of your teeth. <laughs> But that's not good enough because it's not about can I go to heaven? It's about, can I glorify God while I'm here in the earth by living the life that he wants me to live? So, how many of you agree that we go through things? We get tested, we go through things. Now, you know, a child doesn't get to go from, say, grade school to high school unless they take some tests and pass those tests. And so then, every year that you go to school, You would take some tests at the end to see if you really knew what you thought you had learned. And I find for me, sometimes I think I know things, and when the pressure's put on, then I think, well, just because I've got it underlined in my Bible apparently doesn't mean that I know it. <laughs> Come on now, you know what I mean? I mean, just because we sit in color in our Bibles, that doesn't mean that we know anything <laughs> or have any kind of spiritual maturity. The way we find out what we really know is when we're tested and we stand firm. Now, I agree that the testing times in life are not very pleasant. They're not very easy. You know, an interesting thing that I've seen in the Word of God, and maybe you've thought about this, maybe you've never thought about it. You know, God deals with us in different ways, and He gives us different things at different times. And God sealed His covenant with Noah by giving him a rainbow. Isn't that amazing? And He sealed His covenant with Abraham by giving him a circumcision. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm voting for rainbow days. <laughs> However, I, I mean, that's really a stark difference, you know? I mean, this guy gets a rainbow, and here's the other one that gets, you know, the circumcision. I'm like, well, what's that all about? You know something? It's very difficult sometimes when you're going through a hard time to look at somebody that seems to have all the rainbows in life and think, what in the world is wrong with me? What am I doing wrong? Doesn't God love me? How's the enemy getting into my life? But here's what I want you to do tonight. I want you to make a decision that you are going to fully trust God. Fully, completely trust God. And you know what? If he gives your friend a rainbow and he gives you a circumcision, which means the cutting back of the flesh, 
then you have to just say, God, I trust you that you've got a personalized, individualized plan for me. And even though this thing hurts so bad, I want to scream my head off. I know that you are going to work something good out of this and it's going to make me a better person because God is faithful. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you really, do you really think that I would have very much to say to you tonight that would be valuable if all my days had been rainbow days? Of course not. But I've gone through stuff. I mean, I've gone through a lot of stuff in my life. I've gone through things with people. I've gone through financial things. I've gone through some serious health things. I have been through things in my life. But the good news is, is I'm still here. Yeah. Amen? And that's what it takes, that you won't give up and you won't quit. And always know this, God will never allow more to come on you than what you can bear. But with every temptation, he also always provides the way out. When you've had enough of the hard stuff, then you'll get a rainbow here and there. And maybe sooner or later, it'll all be rainbows. I hope so, but I'm still not having all rainbow days. I've got a lot more than I used to have, that's for sure, but they're not all that way. So, God actually will test us, and he tests us by not giving us what we want when we want it. Let me tell you something. God may not always give you what you want, but he will always give you what you need. Did you hear me? God may not always give you what you want, but he will always give you what you need. You're thinking, well, I sure don't need this. Well, you know, <laughs> you know what? You may not need it in the natural. It may hurt you in the natural, but you may also be getting something in the spirit. Do you understand what I'm saying? You may also be getting something in the spirit that is going to actually be the springboard that God uses to promote you to the next place and to make you spiritually mature enough to have the thing that you're asking God to give you. Let me tell you something. When you ask God for something, just because you want it, that doesn't mean you're ready for it. And it doesn't mean I'm ready for it. You know, when God first called me to do what I'm doing 37 years ago, I thought for sure, man, I'd just, next day, I'd just be, wow, worldwide, all over the place, you know, because God called me. I'm anointed. <laughs> Woo. And you know, if you want to know the truth, except for a lack of, you know, I've gotten certainly a lot more experience, but I mean, when I was sitting in my living room floor teaching 20 people, I was actually really a pretty good teacher. And I couldn't figure out why God didn't let me loose on more people. <laughs> well, now I know very well why he didn't let me loose on more people, because it would have been a total disaster. I would turn the television on and I'd see other people preaching and, you know, of course, I felt like God had told me I was going to do that. And I remember in my pride and haughtiness looking at them and thinking, God, I just don't get it. I could teach circles around them. <laughs> well, that's probably why I wasn't there doing the teaching. And they were because I thought more highly of myself than I should have. I don't know if anybody's comfortable with this word or not comfortable with it, but it is a Bible word, so we're going to use it tonight anyway. We need a degree of brokenness in our life. And that is not a bad word. It means that our flesh has to be broken or circumcised, if you will. We have to stop walking in the flesh and learn how to walk in the Spirit if we really want to have what we say that we want to have. I recall one time complaining to God. Well, I don't understand why you deal with me so strongly. And I can't do this, and I can't do that, and I can't do something else, and you know, I see all these people doing this and these people doing that, and I see preachers doing this, and I see people doing things that you just are all over me about if I do. And you know what God's answer was back to me? And maybe there's some people here tonight that need to hear this. He said, look, you've asked me for a lot. Do you want it or not? So you know what? In a certain way, you might want to be a little more careful what you ask for. Because to be honest, when you pray and say, God, give me a worldwide ministry, honey, you don't know. <laughs> you do not know what you're in for. You know, when Israel prayed, Lord, let me lead worship around the world, you know what? He didn't know what he was asking for. 
We ask for a lot of stuff, not having any idea what it's going to take. Now, listen to me. What it's going to take for God to actually get us ready for that thing that we're asking him for. That's why many are called and few are chosen. <laughs> Amen. So, I can stand here tonight and teach you from experience I'm qualified to teach you the things I'm going to teach you tonight because I didn't just go buy a book and put together a little message. I've been through all of these things that I'm going to share with you tonight that are things that I believe that we go through and tests that we must pass in order for God to promote us to the levels that we say that we want to be in. Is anybody up for that tonight? Okay. I always say I don't serve much dessert, but... This will help you when it's the midnight hour and you're by yourself and you're dealing with all ugly things in your life to know how to get through and be able to say when you're much older and have had a lot more experience, I'm still here. I still love God. I haven't quit. I haven't given up and I don't intend to. Amen? All right. Come on. Give God a big praise. <laughs> Tests that we encounter on our way to promotion. You're going to find tonight that some of the things that you're going through that you think are so crazy, everybody has to confront these things at different times in their life. So first of all, God does test us. Psalm 7 verse 9 says, God tries the hearts, emotions, and thinking powers. He is a righteous God, or in other words, he tests us and tries us, and he's right in doing so. You know why? Because we belong to God. And he has the right to find out if we actually are going to hold up under pressure because God wants to do more through us. You know, I recall one time, and anybody here who wants to be used greatly by God, I want you to listen to what I'm going to say. I remember when the Lord put this in my heart. He said, I want you to always remember that however many people you can help, that's exactly how many you can hurt. Amen. Amen. So when you start standing in front of people, telling them how they need to live their life, <laughs> even if it's two or three people you're standing in front of telling them how they ought to live their life, even if it's your kids, come on now, you need to make sure you got the goods. It doesn't do much good to tell everybody else what to do and then not be living it yourself. That's what's caused some of the, tra caused some of the tragedies that we've had in the body of Christ over the last 20 or 30 years. So, we do encounter tests. Jeremiah eleven twenty says, God tests the heart and mind. Well, how do you test anything? Put a little pressure on it. It's not a bad thing. We don't have to be comfortable all the time. The Bible says, be instant in season and out, whether it's convenient or it's not. You test a thing by requiring it to do what it says that it can do. How many of you don't like it if you go buy a brand new coffee pot and you take it home and plug it in and it won't work? That's frustrating, isn't it? You wanted to get what you thought that you were getting. You, re you test something by requiring it to manifest what it says it can do. There's not a person here, I would imagine, who has ever bought a chair that you didn't sit in it before you bought it. Amen? Amen. I've never bought a mattress that I didn't actually lay on it in the store. I didn't care how silly I looked. I didn't care what people thought. Dave and I have not bought a mattress that we didn't lay on it and see if it was going to be comfortable. So we do test things, and God has a right to test us. Now, Deuteronomy chapter 8 is a very precious chapter to me in the Bible because I lived it long before I understood what was going on in my life and before I really ever knew that Deuteronomy 8 existed. So I want to share with you just a little tiny bit about some of the early years of my ministry. And you know, if you don't feel like you're called to ministry, well, we're all called to ministry if you want to know the truth. Not everybody's called to a platform ministry, but we're all called to be used by God and to minister to people. Actually, more people are going to be influenced by each one of you one-on-one -on -one than will ever be influenced even by a ministry like this. If every single believer would really get out there and let their light shine and be the kind of believer that God really has equipped us to be, we would see some massive changes in the world and they would happen quick. People are waiting for the evidence of what it's really like to live 
for Jesus Christ. But I'm going to use some ministry examples tonight. You don't have to be called to that kind of ministry to apply these examples to your own life. Chapter 8, verse 1, all the commandments which I command you this day, you shall be watchful to do, that you might live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord your God is giving to your fathers. And you shall earnestly remember all the way which the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you, to prove you, which means to test, to know what was in your mind and heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. Now, can I tell you that when you have rainbow days, it's easy to keep God's commandments. It's easy to give a little bit in the offering if no matter what you got, you're still going to have lots left over when you're done. It's easy to obey God when everything is going your way. It's easy to be nice to people and be loving when you feel up and ooey gooey and Everything is wonderful. But what about when God is asking you to love somebody that you'd like to punch them in the eye? <laughs> Anybody ever go through that? How about, yeah, uh -huh, yeah, of course. Well, one of the tests we'll talk briefly about tonight is loving the unlovely test. Oh, God, just teach me how to love. <laughs> oh, yes, Jesus, I want to walk in love. I tell you what, we are so spiritual in church. I mean, when Israel's singing to us and the girls are up here dancing around, it's a party and it's so great. And man, now Joyce is going to preach tonight and I'm going to be so encouraged. Can I tell you something? You got to go home. <laughs> now, I don't want that to be too discouraging, but you got to go home. And that's where this has got to work. If it only works, if this only works in here, then it's of no value when we go out there. There's no pressure in here. <laughs> and you know what? I know you guys are up for this because only really radical people spend their time doing this kind of thing. You're here tonight because you want to be here. You're here because you love God and because you really want to learn. You want to grow. And you want to be able to pass these tests and not give in to temptation. So a big hand clap for you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. A lot of you have taken vacation time from your work to be here, and you've traveled, and you've rented hotels. And let me tell you something. When you make that kind of sacrifice just to hear the Word of God, something amazing is going to happen in your life. <laughs> Verse 3 says, And he humbled you, and he allowed you to hunger. <laughs> and he fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you recognize and personally know that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Merciful day. Well, let me just see if I can tell you this story real quick. I had no idea why God was making me wait so long. When I had such a big vision and everything that I looked at was little. How many of you know that we can quote the scripture, don't despise the day of small beginnings, but by and large, it's very hard not to despise them when you have got a big vision or a big dream in your heart. And I don't care what this is. If you need, if you need to lose 50 pounds and you're only losing an ounce a week, that's not going to get you very excited. But if you stick with something long enough, you will ultimately get there. And it was so hard for me not to give up in those early days. In one way, it was hard for me not to give up. In another way, I look back now and I realize that God had me boxed in and there was no way I really could have given up, but I threatened giving up all the time. And I'm sure he stood back and laughed just like he does when you threaten to give up all the time. Oh, how I remember one day falling in the floor. Oh, God. God. <laughs> I just, I quit, God, I give up. That's it. I can't do this anymore. And honestly, I heard the Holy Spirit say, really? <laughs> and I thought, well, you sound kind of excited. What's with that? <laughs> and here's what came back in my heart. The only time I really get to do anything in your life, Joyce, is the few minutes when you do give up. 
because I was into such works of the flesh. I was trying to make my ministry grow. I was trying to change myself. I was trying to change Dave. I was trying to change my kids. I was trying to be prosperous. I mean, I, I tried until I almost died. I've been saying that for years, actually. <laughs> One of our daughters, Sandra, she's here with us tonight, and she's actually working on a book right now called I Tried Until I Almost Died, and most of us do that. Amen? We just get into works of the flesh, and we just completely wear ourselves out, and we're so frustrated, and we don't understand why we're not getting what we want, because, now listen to me, all we have our mind on in those early days is getting what we want. If you're single, you want to get married. If you're married, you want your spouse to be a spiritual giant. If you don't have kids, you want kids. If you have kids, you want the kids to grow up and leave. <laughs> if you have a small house, you want a big house. When you get a big house, you want somebody to clean it. <laughs> then when you get somebody to clean it, you don't like the cleaning lady, you want another cleaning lady. <laughs> Come on, are you with me tonight? Yeah. Until we learn that it's not stuff, that satisfies us. God really cannot give us what we want. And so I remember one day, I remember the intersection that I was at. I was going down to get the mail, which was, you know, usually at that time, two, three, four pieces. And my goodness, if we got 10 pieces of mail, I would just have a, a man, I, that was a rainbow day for me. It was like, whoa. I mean, I would be excited and, you know, but then when we didn't get any, I'd be down there. <laughs> then if we got some, I'd be excited. <laughs> If we had money, I was excited. You know, Dave would get a bonus every year at work of about $1,200, I think, and that had to last us. That was the extra money for the whole year. And man, I was excited on bonus day. But then we'd have to buy four new tires, and the $1,200 would get down to $800, and then one of the kids would have to go to the doctor, and it'd be $700. Then the refrigerator would break, and it'd be $600. Man, by the time we got down to $200 or $100, I was... Is there anybody in the building that's tired of what I call yo-yo Christianity? You know, you're up when your circumstances are up, and you're down when your circumstances are down. You're up, and you're down. You're up, and you're down. You're happy with the rainbow days, but Lord help us when we have one of those circumcision days. We don't like that at all. Amen? Well, don't look at me like that. The Word's in the Bible. It just simply means the cutting away of the flesh. God has to deal with us so we are not walking in the flesh all the time. He loves us even if we do, but we're not very valuable to Him if we're in that condition. He needs us to be stable and to be the same whether we're on the mountaintop or whether we're in the valley. You know, we have a lot of different temptations in life, and one of them is the temptation to not trust God during times of trouble. But we only have two options. We can either trust God, or we can worry and fret and have anxiety and stress and fear. I think the choice is really clear. Trust God. I want to teach you more about how to handle the various temptations that come to us in life. You know, there are many different types of them. It's important to recognize them and to know when and how to resist them. Thank 
ఎప్పుడు చూసినా మా పిల్లలు బాగా ఉండరండి ఎప్పుడు చూసినా ఈరోచనాలు జ్వరం అవుతుండే డాక్టర్ కాడికి వెళ్దామంటే పైసలు లేవు ఇంకా పిల్లలు అట్నే పండుకొని ఉంటారు వి హ్ బీన్ ఏబుల్ టు ఐడెంటిఫై దిస్ విలేజెస్ through government and through some local pastors so this wells what we are drilling through Joyce Meyer Ministries you know we take proper care to find where is the good water through a good water diviner it will take about 3 uh, days to go to that village and drill the bore well to give fresh water to the villagers పిల్లలు కూడా బడికి పోతారు నేను కూడా పొలం పనికి పోయి బాగా సంపాదిస్తాను ఈ గ్రామంలో బోరే ఇప్పించడం ద్వారా ఇక్కడ ఉన్న వాళ్ళందరి జీవితంలో ఎంతో మార్పు వచ్చింది ఇక్కడ ఉన్న వాళ్ళందరి అవసరాలు తీరుతున్నాయి కాబట్టి యేసుప్రభు దేవుని తెలుసుకొని సంఘంలో సభ్యులుగా చేరడానికి ఎంతో ఆరాట పడుతున్నారు మాకు ఇక్కడ ఒక బోరే ఇప్పించి మా ఆత్మీయ దాహాన్ని తీరుస్తున్నారు మేము పాస్టర్ ద్వారా ఆ నిజమైన దేవుణ్ణి తెలుసుకొని ఈ సంఘంలో ఆ యేసు ప్రభుని ఆరాధిస్తున్నాం